Our guest of honor today is Dr. Francois Paris Dinoussi. She's the co-discoverer of HIV and co-winner of the 2008 Nobel Prize. So we're really honored to have her here today with us. And when Dr. Barre Sanusi began studying the science of retroviruses, AIDS, the HIV viruses in that family, she didn't really appreciate how this work, work would prepare her for identifying the cause of HIV and really to have such a great impact on the world and so many people. So soon after her discovery, it quickly led to a diagnostic test and jump-started new therapies. It's remarkable how great medical advances occur from a, then a simple observation on the basic study of human biology. So it's a great honor to have her here today with us. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Russell. Thanks, uh, Louis, and Jen, for this uh, very nice uh, words. Thanks for inviting me uh, uh, to give uh, this uh, Jonathan Lacks uh, Memorial Lecture. I'm very, very honored and pleased uh, to give uh, this uh, lecture. Uh, of course, I think scientists uh, have also the responsibility, in, uh, in my opinion, to be somehow activist. Um, and it's because probably of my story about HIV AIDS, but uh, as you said, Jen, as you said, it has been a terrible period that we went through all together. Uh, and, and probably it's at that time that I realize uh, uh, all the responsibilities that we all have um, to work uh, really close together. So that since the early 80s, uh, really HIV research has been an example of what we like to say today, translational research. Uh, at that time, in 1980, the word translational research was not existing at all. Uh, but really, uh, I think HIV somehow uh, has been a wonderful example, not to make only basic research, to make paper in the best journal, science and nature, so, but really to make research in order to develop tools, to develop tools for people affected by, uh, by this infection. And it's really a parallel, uh, the research on uh, basic research, clinical research, and also research in social science. Of course, the role of activism has been really great. And of course, it has been a unique engagement of uh, communities for uh, universal access of treatment since 1996. We have seen the wonderful progress in the, the, the decrease of uh, uh, first Lyme treatment pricing prices, as uh, we can see uh, on this slide, uh, a wonderful progress in terms of uh, the development of generic and the competition and uh, uh, the, 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 the pressure of activism. Today, today we, uh, we have to think again and to start again because there is a, a new therapeutic revolution in the field of hepatitis C treatment. And we know that many of HIV uh, positive uh, uh, people are also affected by hepatitis C. So we have to start again to fight all together against uh, to, to obtain universal access at an affordable price to the save the life for patients that are affected with hepatitis C. Often people said, uh, why uh, do we need to have uh, a new uh, uh, treatment? People are doing well on uh, the current treatment. 
Of course, as I said before, we have 30, more than 30 million, more than 34 million of people living with HIV and only 10 million on, on treatment. Uh, we, it's a lifelong treatment and it's very difficult for the patient uh, to uh, adhere to the treatment for uh, all the long, the, for their life. Uh, it's still for them a problem uh, of stigmatization and discrimination when they are uh, on treatment. Uh, and of course, it's a, it's a costly uh, treatment. So we need to think about uh, uh, the future uh, therapy. So we have to find a solution. Uh, what kind of uh, HIV cure are we looking for today? Uh, of course, when we are speaking about cure, generally we are speaking about eradication. That means sterilizing cure. That means that we uh, uh, are looking for a treatment that will eliminate all latently infected cells in all the compartments of the host. More or less, the, the only proof of concept somehow we know it's the Berlin patient today where we cannot detect in the blood and in the compartment tested uh, the presence of uh, the virus and of latently infected cells. I used to say to get a, a, a sterilizing cure it's almost impossible mission with HIV. And then I say uh, in, Fr in French we say impossible is not French. Uh, <laughs> However, it's going to be very, very difficult, if not impossible. But we strongly believe more and more that uh, 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 what Tony Fauci is calling today sustainable remission. I am say that I like very much the, the, the wording sustainable remission. It's certainly what uh, we should look for because we have proof of concept today. So it's for all these reasons that we decide uh, at the International Aid Society to try, and this is the role of the International Aid Society, to try to stimulate and accelerate research on, let's say, sustainable remission. Uh, uh, we thought that uh, we could do better in terms of uh, uh, cooperation in that field. Uh, and uh, we thought that it was the role of scientists to uh, define first uh, what are the, the main priorities. Why uh, I propose to uh, the International Aid Society to have uh, a bottom to top at approach. Uh, to have a group of scientists, uh, who were 30 scientists from different disciplines, uh, trying to um, define what are the, the main direction and priority in the field of HIV uh, cure research. One priority is certainly to continue to understand better the mechanisms that control HIV persistence, both at molecular, cellular, and immunological level. Second, and the Boston patients uh, indeed turn out show, are telling us uh, that this priority uh, is still there to develop new assays, uh, to better detect and measure the viral reservoir, and to develop also uh, experimental models uh, to, uh, to test for new uh, strategy. And third point is certainly to develop and evaluate new therapeutic tools and immune strategy in order to achieve uh, this uh, sustainable uh, remission. Indeed, some of these phenomenon that we see in HIV infection are somehow similar to what we can see in other uh, disease, non-communicable disease, other chronic condition like cancer, like cardiovascular disease, uh, aging disease, and so on. So my call is indeed we have to work together with others, not only uh, people working in HIV, but 
researchers also working on non-HIV chronic condition if we want to make progress on HIV but also on other uh, disease. So we have to invest uh, in science, we have to invest both on infectious disease and non-communicable disease research to get a, a sustainable uh, global health, which is one of uh, the goals that we are all hearing about these days. And we can do that only if uh, we can work together as we did really since the very beginning in the field of HIV. All together, that means, of course, what I used to say, the HIV community. For me, HIV community integrates everybody. People living with HIV, the scientists, the health workers, the, the doctors. For HIV, for the future of HIV, but also for the future of other disease. This is a call to work together like in the early days. We have been successful. I'm sure we will be successful in the future. Thank you very much for your attention.